What's up guys, welcome to the series about design patterns and how to implement them on AWS using only serverless services. If you haven't checked the first episode, make sure to give it a view. We talked about the strangler, the circuit breaker, the router, distributed trigger, and the decoupled invocation. In this episode, we have three new patterns to cover. So let's get to it. And just let me start by saying that the state machine pattern is the um, right way for doing orchestration on the serverless stack. We'll get to a detailed use case in a few seconds, but the general use case for when you want to use a state machine is when you find yourself trying to build an application that deals with complex decisions and, and complex scenarios. Like for example, building and, uh, and uh, helping users to plan a trip. Right, So your application should allow them to search and find a flight, uh, book the flight. Now they need to also book a hotel room and probably a car. But if no car is available, they probably want to roll back and uh, choose a different hotel or, or a different airport. Or maybe they don't even want to go to that city anymore. So you have to roll them back to the flight step. Another example that comes to mind is... Uh, uh, ordering a pizza online. You start by choosing the size uh, and then the crust. Then you start adding toppings, but you might change your mind and, and go back and change the crust, you know, go back to the first step. And maybe once you get to the final step, you remember that extra topping that you want to add. Then the application might ask you to wait for a bit while it checks whether the extra topping is available. So the application have to implement all this different logic all this different decision making, which can definitely be done through Lambda functions, right? Um, believe me, I tried. But Lambda functions are not the right orchestration mechanism for linking all these decision making steps together. You could, you could, you know, you could definitely build something like this using using a framework, a, a monolithic framework, right? But it's just not the right way to do orchestration. So again you're having a discussion with your product people, with your, with your teams, uh, with your teammates, and they mention scenarios that require retrying an action, uh, uh, require executing some actions in parallel, right? Requires waiting for a response uh, before moving forward. It requires rolling back to a previous step. That's when you know you should look into the Saga pattern. And I'm currently actually preparing a whole episode just around Sagas with a detailed example with code snippets. So make sure to subscribe for that. For now, let's just say the behaviors mentioned above are the core of a state machine. And we explore that more in the upcoming slides. The main benefits state machines provide, as we've established already, is the ability to orchestrate a complex workflow of individual tasks. The other benefits of building uh, state machines with AWS's step functions is this native integration that it gives you with various native cloud services, which means it will allow you to continue decoupling your logic into several chunks. And if you've already probably done a lot of Lambda work, you can, you know, most likely still reuse a lot of it. The main consideration here is that to take advantage of error handling and retry logic, you have to make sure your functions are designed to be idompotent, which basically means you could run it multiple times and it won't change the state of the system. This is a main gotcha that you, ha you have to keep in mind. And I'll put a link uh, in the description if you want to check out how to build idompotent applications. The other thing is, if you know for a fact that your workload is going to last less than 15 minutes, then, you know, obviously Lambda is the best way to integrate with the uh, step functions. However, if you're trying to use it for some sort of a uh, batch workloads, then use AWS batch for it. To explore this concept even more, I wanted to present you a simplified banking system where we have four distinct services or, or four areas of concern. We have an account application service, which is concerned with accepting applications for people who want to open a bank account and is responsible for returning an approve or reject decision. Next is 
a data check-in service, which is responsible for performing various validations, checking the identity documentation of a, of a bank account applicant, right? Verifying that the home address appears valid, um, other data validation that you can think of. The third one is the human review service. Because we can't always rely on automated systems yet, uh, we need human's intervention from time to time. So this service takes applications that need review uh, and allow humans to make decisions about these flagged applications if, if, something is, if something looks fishy. And finally, we have the account service, uh, which is responsible for creating and managing a bank account after a new account application has been approved. Now, if we zoom out a little bit, here is what the account system looks like. And it becomes clear even more that what we have is an instance of service orchestration. And it is managed from the point of view of the account application service. Because after all, the account application service is the one making calls to the other services. It is the one reacting to the responses that it gets from the other services in a stateful manner, right? When it starts making the calls, it keeps the state and the state is transitioned. Uh, it's, it's actually passed to the next step on every transition. So. When a new account application is received, it will call the data check-in service to check the ID information, you know, all, all, all the stuff we talked about. It also verifies the address of the applicant. Then, if any of those checks come back with a flag, a human reviewer will get involved to make a decision. Uh, and finally, if an approval decision was made, uh, it will call out the account service to open a new account, right? Straightforward. Now, let's look at the same steps we just went through, but this time visualized in a different way. Uh, we will visualize them in a sort of a, a flow chart and, and you'll understand why. So first, we verify the ID documents, then we'll check to make sure that the home address appears valid. Then we might need to involve a human to review the data in the application. Then we'll wait for the review to happen. And finally, we can approve the application. At first glance, it might seem complete, but you know, it's, it's not enough, right? And we can make it way better. So let's see how we can do that. First, we don't need to be doing the ID check and the address check in a serial fashion. The result of one does not depend on the output of the other. So instead, we could arrange to have those two steps completed in parallel. Next, we can improve the steps that happen after the two checks are performed. So let's encode explicitly a step to show that a human review is only required if the ID or address check failed. So it's possible to go straight from checks to an approved state. And finally, we should have an explicit step as well showing a rejected application and showing that a human review step can transition to either an approve or reject decision. There, that is much better. So you might not know it, but what you're looking at here is exactly what we call a state machine. A state machine simply describes a collection of computational steps that we want to split into discrete states. There's always one starting state. There's always one state active at a time. And you can think of this uh, like a workflow, right? Or, or like an executable flow chart. So as the steps of the state machine activate, the active state is going to get some input it will do something useful with it, hopefully, and will generate some output. And it will then indicate the next state to transition to uh, by passing to it the output, right? So the output gets passed from the current state into, uh, the, it, it becomes like, okay. Current state's output becomes next state's input. That's better. And this is such a powerful way to coordinate work that AWS offer a specific serverless service to work in this fashion, which is called AWS Step Functions. The diagram for this one is pretty straightforward. You can have an API gateway that will trigger directly step functions. It is within the step functions that all the logic or all the magic happens. And 
If you look at the uh, step functions that we have in front of us, it's basically about the booking and reserving hotel example that I mentioned earlier. So there is the sunny path, right? There is there's the green path where everything is working green, fine, and it ends up include concluding. Um, however, there are breakpoints where if something fails, we 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 exactly configure in the state machine how to handle it. So all that complex logic can be defined with step functions and each execution task can be a Lambda. So you can build these actions, every one of them as a microservice in a Lambda function. One Lambda function, all it does is book a hotel, right? Another Lambda function, all it does is um, search for a car. And then you use uh, AWS step functions to link through them and to build a workflow around them. And you can also integrate with a data source if your workload needs that. So um, these steps that you see here, most likely they will need to talk to a DynamoDB table. Uh, they probably need to talk to an S3 bucket uh, or maybe another resource. And Again, I just wanted to introduce what are state machines, uh, what is SAGAS, what's basically the state machine pattern, and you know, just, just wanna gauge your interest while I do a deep dive in an upcoming video. That was it guys for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new from it. If you did, don't forget to give it a like and please let me know in the comments what patterns would you like me to cover next. Nah.